Hi friends, it's Pastor Mike again from Yorkminster Presbyterian Church here in Yorktown, Virginia. I'm going to read another story for you today, this time from author Max Lucado, who is one of my favorite authors. It's a good thing God doesn't make me have just one favorite. But Max Lucado wrote this wonderful book called You Are Special. And I bet you haven't read it, but if you have, read along with me, okay? The Wemmicks were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall and others were short. Some wore hats, others wore coats. But all were made by the same carver and all lived in the same village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. I like stickers. Do you like stickers? These stickers are different. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. And up and down the streets all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones and those with smooth wood and fine paint always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave dots. Oops, here's the picture. The talented ones got stars too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing really pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some women had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. Others, though, could do little. They got dots. Oops. One of these days I'll master the whole showing you the picture thing. Punchinello was one of these. Here he is. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched. So the people would give him more dots. And then would he try to explain why he fell? He would say something silly and the Wemmicks would give him still more dots. After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water and then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him dots for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good wimmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had a lot of dots. He felt better around them. One day he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever met. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden and her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers, it's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Others would look down at her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but that dot wouldn't stick either. Oh, there's the picture. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. And so he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia replied. 
Every day, I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you go find out for yourself? Go up the hill, he's there. And with that, the Wemmick, who had no stickers, turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me, Punchinello cried out. Lucia didn't hear her. So Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself. And he decided to go see Hila. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. I know how that feels. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the very top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. And then he heard his name. Punchinello? The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wimmick asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm, the marker, maker spoke thoughtfully as he looked at the gray dots. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think. And I think you're pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My paint is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke to him very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't even know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I came because I met someone who had no marks, Since Punch said Punchinello. I know, she told me about you. Why don't the stickers stay on her? The maker spoke softly. Because she's decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand, said Punchinello. Eli smiled. You will, but it will take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli left it, lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you're special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell on the ground.
And that's the end of the story in the book, right? But it's not really the end of the story. Do you know who the maker is in the story? If you said God, you're right. But I have my own Punchinello story. When I was younger, much younger, we won't talk about how long ago that was, but when I was a child growing up, I didn't have any brothers and sisters, and I looked funny. I had these ears that stuck out like car doors, and I wear my hair in a long ponytail, all back and greasy. People made fun of me all the time, and we moved a lot, so a lot of the time I was the new kid. And if you've ever been the new kid, you know how hard that can be. And for a long time in my life, I stopped making friends. It was just easier than trying to make friends and then move, or just to work hard to make friends who didn't care what I looked like or what I sounded like or where I came from. But one time when we moved, we moved to New Jersey, which some of y'all heard the story, right? So we moved to New Jersey, which most people would not consider a step up in life. But there was a, a young woman, a young girl down the street, uh, my age, we were in eighth grade, I guess, at that point, invited me to go to her church youth group. And it was at her church youth group that I met the maker. And I began to understand that what other people thought about me didn't matter. What mattered was what God thought about me. But I want to tell you, it took me a long time to begin to like myself and like the way that God had made me. There is science out there that says, if it's true, that it takes nine positive comments, nine positive things said to overcome just a single negative one. So I'm happy for you if you know the maker and you've already come to understand that what other people say doesn't matter. But if you have friends that don't understand about God or how God loves people or how much God cares about them, then it's your job to help them understand, like Lucia in the story. It's your job to say things to, to help them feel better about themselves and who they are in relation to God and help them to visit the Maker. Time for a Pray After Me prayer. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for making us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that it doesn't matter what other people think about us. Thank you that what matters is what you think. Help us to love other people and to like other people the same way that you love and like them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.